this area in here is referred to as the mask. This is the keystone. That is the most critical area to the mask, is establish that keystone, these parts in here. Next important part of the keystone starts right in here. This will give us the shape of the mouth. If you can see, I'm a little deeper on that side, a little shallower, shallower on that side. Everything from here on out is formed at the base of the nose and in particularly inside here right under the nostrils. You will never get the shape of the mouth correct unless you get the shape under the nostrils because everything flows out of this area and down around the mouth. There is a movement right in here from the cheek caused by the canines. So that area is raised just slightly and that'll give, but pay attention to that. We'll go ahead and show you in a little more critical way of how that works. You can see how, see how that is different from that? I need to go ahead and get the same movement here. This is like the keystone for the mouth. I get that and the, the base of the nostril wings and get everything flowing out of there correctly and then we can establish the mouth. That's how we, actually that's how we establish the mouth. Now, I'll be using three different types of tools to work with this nose. I'll be going slow. I'll be using the pneumatic chisel, this chisel right here, and chisels for the pneumatic hammer, and hand chisels. These are all percussive, but I'm using very, very lightweight percussives. The next thing I'll be using will be scraping tools. I'll use a chisel as a scraping tool, and then I'll be using real uh, scraping tools. So let's see what we can do with this this morning. We need to lower that, that's the first thing. Music brought to you by Ingersoll Rand. Still up quite a bit. See how getting these depths will establish this line here. There's no need to speed through this part. As the marble becomes thinner, these become very fragile. I've seen a lot of people break their noses off. You got it. Just Take your time. Now I'm using the chisel as a scraping tool. Okay. Now. See our pencil. You can see better how that's going. I'm looking over here at the plaster and I see that this actually all falls away. Look at, look at that. This in here needs to be brought down. This is a boss, that's a hollow. This is the canine region. That's where the mouth will change directions. Uh, 
The equivalent to that could be the continental divide. This is where the slope will change directions. This is the mountain peak. And this is higher than that. I'm going to bring that down a bit. See now, I'll draw this line. Oh, we're getting there. And we're pretty much, this slope still needs to come down a bit. And this cheek is a little higher. You know, that cheek is higher and this is lower. Let me take some of this cheek out. See, you're acutely aware this is higher. This has slightly different shape. To me, the whole thing behind this is what you can learn. And this shape and this shape are slightly off. This is a little more recessed and this is a little more bossed. So I'm going to bring down this, but that's going to put my head in front of the camera. So I'm going to just uh, move the camera to the side and I don't know how much. I'm calling this piece Charis because it's the root of charisma and character in so many words and it was like one of the biggest concepts about beauty in ancient Greek culture. It was along with Venustus in the Latin. And it's because I don't watch, worship at the idol, at the uh, temple of ugly art. I think ugly art is meant to de demean us and make us stupid. And I'm just trying to get that slope. So it's just like drawing very gently, very slowly, those very classic academy drawings that they take hours and hours. There's no need to, need to spiel, speed through it. It's getting the form. It's just drawing in three dimensions. And the, 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 the marble is such an elegant material to work with. It, you can see the form so beautifully. So it just it just doesn't take much right here. Oh, we're scraping it. Just to get the form. Gently gently cross hatching it. And you can see this, I don't know if you, you'll be able to see it, but there's little grooves in here. And this one I, I filed off and made it like a knife. So I can scrape even further with that one. Remove those marks. This, now I'm in the scraping mode. To me, this is, this is still way too much. If you like to draw in detail, draw in charcoal and get real nice detailed drawings, then you'll be very good at this. I'm just looking for subtle gradations in the line. Now if you want to really check your work, this is like double checking in math. You can check your work by using a traveling light. We've got a lot of roughness still in the eyes and in the mouth, but I'm looking for the general overall shape. I'm not like looking to put any detail in yet. Just looking for the overall shape. See, the white of the marble is actually superior to the white of the plaster. The white of the plaster is superior to the tone of the clay. After you do your clay and you cast it in plaster, you're going to see all kinds of mistakes in the plaster and marble. And 
the Italians call the, the clay the birth, the plaster the death. This plaster, you destroy the clay and plaster has kind of a dead quality to it. And then the marble has a very lifelike quality and they call the marble the resurrection. To me, this is the best kind of best form of meditation. So very carefully, looking at the directions of the way the nostrils move into the tip of the nose. All this, these elegant shapes. The look actually folds back a bit. See, the, the highest point on this lip is actually the midpoint where it starts changing directions. The high point is always going to be where, the, where it changes directions. So this goes that direction, and this goes that direction. Until you actually do this, you'll start seeing the sense of it all. You know, Keats' poem, beauty is truth and truth is beauty and that's all you need to know or ever will need to know. It's my credo. We're looking at massive changes of light in here. We're looking at subtle changes of light in here. This is the way an architect will think about their work. You get the symmetry here and here, 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 you just keep going down and just working on the symmetry. One side, the other side, one side, the other side, one side, the other side. We can check our proportions to see if they're going to work visually. See, the center of the lip is not here. Here's the high point of the lip, here's the low point. We need to make that the low point. Getting this lined up mechanically is firmitas, firmness of design. In a sense, we as artists are some of the last vestiges of the last human creations, maybe. You know, the artificial intelligence take over the world. But with the first EMP attack or solar geomagnetic st solar storm, this will be here in your iPads moment. Gabriel Marcel's whole life and purpose was does technology make our lives better? And it seems that he kind of objected to technology as making our life better and didn't believe it did. In many ways, it makes our life easier, but I don't know if it makes our life better. One could argue that Aristotle said that leisure is what we should aim for because to just work and work and work makes brutes out of us, and our thinking becomes brutish. If you want to see brutality, just go to YouTube and Facebook you see what everybody's saying about everybody. This elevates us above our Buddhist nature. So that's the utility of this, utilitas. Remove that Buddhist nature. We don't, yes, we have to be beasts sometimes. Sometimes you can be criticized for being too tough on somebody. But we have feral cats that we feed and we've been taking away their food because they've become domesticated and lazy and fat. That's what all this technology does, it makes us lazy and fat, domesticated, and then we could easily controllable. have to put that cat food out in front of us and we'll say do anything. We become stupid even with our high degrees. I don't think there's very many college professors can tell you about what the end justifies the means is, but the ends justify the means. People attribute it to Machiavelli never said anything of the sort. It was Aristotle. And to justify is to make equal. You look on your 
word processor has justification. That's to make equal. So the ends that justify the means, the means is the center of the scale. Call that the means. And if you take the scale and you weight it on one side, it becomes unbalanced. You weight it on the other side, and it becomes unbalanced the other way, it becomes unbalanced the other way. Aristotle referred to these two opposite directions as excess and defect. Excess on one hand, defect on the other. And of course, there are many people who, who some, a lot of the Greek scholars can't stand Aristotle. And I'm not that smart, so I like to get in this area. You can check it with the pencil. Yes, it's equal. So the drawing has become justified. I'm justified in what I do.